Greetings, it's July 30th, and if you can get down to ground level, it can be quite a nice day. Just follow the little woodland path. But if we go up above and look down, there is a lot of smoke in the area, a lot of haze. This is NASA's FIRM's Fire Information for Resource Management System. We're going to look at infrared from yesterday and then roll into today and see if there's a comparison, any growth, any changes. Uh, we've got all the infrared systems turned on. That's the NOAA, the Suomi, uh, the Aqua, and the Terra, just to catch any difference. We'll start off with a fire that's moved east of Lytton and south of Spence's Bridge. This is the infrared from yesterday and now today. There's been expansion south, that's at the bottom of the screen, and to the north on the western side, that's on the left-hand side of the screen. It's almost as if winds from the south have come in and just pushed everything outwards a little bit from the center. I'm not seeing a lot of activity directly south of Spence's Bridge. That appears to have cleaned up quite a bit. But the north side of the Thompson River is very active. And up the Fraser Valley on the east side of the Fraser, that cluster is uh, definitely has some movement north. We've moved up the Thompson River to the Cache Creek Ashcroft area south of Wallachine. We're looking at infrared from yesterday and now today. Uh, there is eastward movement. It's on an approach towards Tunkwa Provincial Park. I also noticed that uh, the infrared to the south of Barnes Lake, that has disappeared. We are now looking at the Sparks Lake fire. Young Lake is at the top of the screen. Bonaparte to the right-hand side of the screen. Hyheum over on the left-hand side. This is the infrared from yesterday and now today. It looks like an overall reduction in the amount of hot spots that we're seeing on this screen and the area around Young Lake definitely has fewer hot spots, fewer heat detections. We've moved westward. This is west of Highway 97, just to the northwest of 70 Mile House. We are looking at the Flat Lake Fire and that's discussed in the video prior. We looked at some major moves. There was an approach by the fire to the south towards Alberta Lake and Valenzuela Creek area. Now let's look at infrared for today. It looks like all those fire clusters have pushed west. Uh, not to the south, not to the southwest, but definitely moving west. Zooming in, these are the heat detections from yesterday on the southern flank. And now today, I'm not seeing any infrared around Cunningham Lake on the southeast corner. I am seeing a bit of reduction to the north of Alberta Lake and really no further movement south. All that movement appears to have gone westward. Please check the links in the description below. Go to BC Wildfire and look at the situation report for this fire. You'll want to be up to date on what evacuation alerts and orders there are. Uh, it's encroaching fairly closely to Meadow Lake Road, so you'll want to be aware of what access routes are available. We've jumped northeastwards towards Canham Lake, top of the Interlakes area. This is infrared from yesterday. And now today, definitely a reduction in the amount of heat clusters that we're seeing, especially on the north side of Canham Lake. And any new infrared on it appears to be within the existing perimeter from yesterday. We're moving now to the Yellowhead Highway. The Raft River fires are on the right-hand side of the screen. To Wheel is the cluster on the left-hand side of the screen. This is yesterday and now today. Definitely looks like a reduction in the amount of heat detections in all three of these fire zones. Keep in mind, uh, this information is from t up to 12 noon, and uh, we still have those afternoon winds to go through, so we are expecting more infrared reports to come in throughout the afternoon. We've moved a bit south. We can see Adams Lake in the Momich area. On the left-hand side of the screen, the upper Shushwap is on the right-hand side of the screen. This is yesterday and now today. 
It does look like a reduction in the overall infrared. The fires to the south at the bottom of the screen also appear to have moved westward slightly. We've moved to the south end of the Shushwap. We are looking at Sycamus about center of the screen and the fire that was to the east. It is still east of Sycamus and that infrared does look like it has reduced. There may be some very slight movement westward, but it looks overall like the infrared has consolidated and tightened up a bit. There may be some control strategies at work by wildfire crews, so do check the ground report for these fires, and the link to the BC Wildfire site is in the description below. We've moved to the North Okanagan. Maple Lake is on the left-hand side of the screen. Sugar Lake is down at the bottom of the screen. This is the infrared from yesterday and now today. It's interesting the fires next to Mabel Lake. The one at the north appeared to move west and the one at the south appeared to move east. This could be the result of shifting winds or the wind as it's affected by the terrain. Uh, it could also be a control strategy at work, so do check those ground reports. We are now looking at the White Rock Lake fire. This is south of Monte Lake, southwest of Falkland. This is yesterday and now today. There appears to be a slight reduction in infrared, but there is eastward movement and northward movement. It almost appears as the same behavior as the fire to the east of Lytton, where winds come in and it appears to push everything apart. This is the smoke in the area from yesterday. Vernon is, Vernon is on the right-hand side of the screen. Uh, that goes to show that Infrared may be obscured by smoke and cloud and haze, and we may not be getting all the data available. We're moving now to southern BC. Lower Arrow Lake is towards the left-hand side of the screen, left to center, and Nelson is to right of center. We can see Kootenai Lake and the fires on both sides of Kootenai Lake. This is infrared from yesterday. And now we're looking at today, very slight and subtle uh, movement. The winds have been kind of milling around. There is a push from the southwest, and when we look at the smoke and haze, uh, it does appear to be flowing to the northeast at a very slow pace. We're now looking at the South Okanagan. This is imagery from yesterday showing those smoke trails moving eastward and northeastward. Here is the infrared from yesterday on its own and now rolling into today. I can see northeastward movement and as it approaches the top of these uh, hillsides, uh, it may catch more of a southwestern breeze and move even further to the northeast. And finally, we'll take a look at Manning Park. This is near the east gate. Princeton is to the north at the top of the screen. The U.S. border is just to the south. We are looking at infrared from yesterday and now today. I definitely saw movement westward on this fire zone, which is curious because I would expect southwest winds to be pushing this to the northeast. So there may be control strategies at work there. And if we zoom out and look at southern BC, we can see how much smoke is piling up in the eastern part of the province. Most of those fires are in the central interior and the smoke is traveling right through the Rockies, through the valley systems, and into Alberta. I read a soil study uh, years ago about the Alberta soil and how rich and uh, fertile it was, and forest fires may be a contributor to that sort of uh, nutrient base. After thousands of years, that's got to add up. So let's take off the background, and we are looking at the infrared from yesterday and now today. Not a lot of change. Uh, it's more apparent when we zoom in and look at these fire zones specifically. Uh, when we see it on mass, there wasn't really a significant difference between yesterday and today, but of course on the ground these fire zones are magnified in intensity. Let's jump to Windy. Uh, 
winds will of course pick up in the afternoon with that afternoon heat uh, we're looking at a few temperatures around the area mainly just to see the wind direction six kilometers an hour here from around the white rock lake area the common denominator today is everything appears to be coming from the south or the southwest there can be variation as these winds come over the hilltops, pick up speed, and then head into a valley and turn around, start coming from the north or even the east, depending on the terrain in your localized area. So do go to the links below, zoom in, and find out what is happening around your community. And as of noon, wind was coming from the south at about one kilometer an hour around 70 Mile House Chasm area. Every fire zone is different, changing vegetation, changing wind patterns. Uh, BC is full of some of the most diverse geography and uh, flora and fauna. But with that beauty comes some dangers. So be safe. Uh, know what's between you and the fire zones. Uh, know what your access routes are. Check the data for your localized area and check the ground reports from BC Wildfire and be safe. Thank you very much for watching. Keep your nose to the breeze.